Aandara, a site covered in the past, yet for an entirely different reason. Our experience along this path of discovery, now allowing one a window, a glimpse, into a deeper, more compounding layer of evidential detail. Unraveling a tangled web of lies, weaved over generations of regurgitated fiction. Accompanied by supportive evidence to, again, reinforce the original instinctual hypothesis created some 10 years ago now. In particular, in regard to who could have, in reality, possibly created these mind-blowing or gargantuan ancient megalithic ruins. Sites we have touched upon or researched in the past, however from a less experienced evidential angle. Thus we feel they are justified a refined revisit. Yet I digress. Ayandara is a claimed Iron Age settlement. Yet what I'm about to demonstrate is that not only is this yet another lie, but that the evidence be overwhelming to support this claim. The choice of stone used in these once exquisitely finished ruins decoration, for example, not only reminiscent of Persepolis, but due to its clearly much greater level of erosion, it would also, as the art would suggest, far predate Persepolis itself. Yet the belief structure, the artistic evolution, and by default, the same civilization responsible for both and indeed the mythological depictions are undeniably linked. Aandara being located in Syria and claimed as dating as far back as the Iron Age. We have covered the magnificent Lamassu, found within Persepolis within a two-part special previously. This extraordinary, seemingly superhumanly precise stone-carved sanctuary, however, although clearly possessing a more advanced depiction of the same creatures found at an apparent Iron Age basalt site, which is actually geographically over 1500 kilometers away and dated to a completely different era, regardless of academic opinion, share unarguable evidential similarity and due to erosion levels can be correlated with the evolution of the depictions along with the civilization responsible's past yet now lost abilities. From Aandara to the Lamassu of Persepolis is clearly an artistic evolution of the mythical creatures depicted on the basalt stones claimed as Iron Age within Aandara. Furthermore, although only a suspiciously tiny portion remains of the basalt floor, a quietly guarded area found at the foot of Cheops upon the Giza Plateau, or more accurately foundation, although only a remnant of what once was probably one of the most significant parts of the ancient ruins themselves, it still holds countless undeniable curious tool marks, each of which clearly made with a tool unarguably tremendously more powerful and capable than that of what academics claim the builders of the pyramids and their constructors wielded, that of copper tools. It all but now seems an insult to one's intelligence. We clearly find Aandara highly compelling. We have come to a point in the age of our civilization, thanks to the efforts of countless individuals who, in the pursuit of truth, specifically the reality of a lost past, a lost civilization once possessing now lost technologies, has finally arrived on the main stage of debate. It has come to a point of critical mass. Either having been made aware of their existence, or indeed realizing or stumbling upon this hidden truth independently, regardless, we have uncovered an immense array of proof to not only confirm their existence, but a proof now all but overwhelming to argue with. The entire planet, literally littered with impossible remnants, left by what we believe was not only one, but part of an array of lost civilizations, several of which being past global superpowers. Yet I digress. The artifacts found throughout Giza, for example, demonstrate a seemingly impossible ability to move and carve stones with the tools mainstream academics would put in the builder's hands, making such creations impossible. There exists within the museum's archives themselves a smorgasbord of vases and stone cores, lay for all to see, each suggest that they were not only the result of some form of advanced lathe work, 
but other far superior and powerful tools far ahead of that of the copper chisel, which to claim was the culprit, we feel is now nothing more than an offense to one's intelligence, when the evidence to suggest otherwise is in front of one's face at the same time. We have previously covered the vases supposedly made using nothing but copper in the past, specifically the trilobe disc. Yet the many other members of the collection, known as the Saqqara vases, not only demonstrate a mastery of lathe work, but some are so impossibly delicate that when attempted to be explained with modern paradigm, one is left utterly baffled. What lost technologies or techniques were used in the creation of these vases? Article 99 from the Anorthosite Nice catalog, but one example of this extraordinary ability to either cut or possibly mold these stone vases. With wafer-thin edges and a shape formed with the lip, demonstrating they would be impossible to recreate even with the advanced technology of a lathe. Who made these seemingly impossible artifacts, along with the unmissable Great Pyramids, highly compelling? We have in the past covered but a few of the jewels that can be found in the crown of now lost civilizations which once dwelled within India. And since this, we have found the possible remnants of a number of different flourishments and additional devolutions within the granite historical record of our planet, proof which we can now confidently demonstrate via a number of antediluvian sites which clearly display this cyclical behavior. The Ellora Cave system, for example, one of the most well-finished and thus precisely executed of which Kalish Temple, a site we have previously covered. Yet I digress. There is no possible way to define how long a religion can survive. As such, the fact that at least three different religious influences can be found upon these miraculous, enormous ancient ruins, once hewn directly from the bedrock of Earth, is proof enough of extraordinary antiquity. Along with these three different religious ages, our previous research among Elora's cave have ourselves found separate tool marks we feel logically left by a mere two separate civilizations, one of the famous cup and spoon mark era, claimed across northern Europe as Neolithic, while the other found upon Kalish and many others throughout India. Indicative of yet another world-faring, yet far more globally powerful and capable, now lost civilization. According to modern paradigm, quote, The rock-cut activity at Elora Cave, three phases from the 6th century to the 12th century. The earliest caves, 1 through 12, discovered between the 5th and 8th centuries, reflect the Mahayana philosophy of Buddhism then prevalent in this region. The Brahmanical group of caves, 13 through 29, including the renowned Kalish, Cave 16, was excavated between the 7th and 10th centuries. The last phase, caves 30 through 34, reflecting the Jaina philosophy. End quote. However, what we do know for a fact, and quite contradictory to the aforementioned mainstream theory, is that this series of 34 caves were all indeed planned and constructed within the abilities available at the era of each of their constructions. Some indeed more modern and thusly planned and executed to a more primitive ability. But Kalish and many others along the network are and were incredibly, seemingly impossibly well executed, with unbelievable artistic and complex vision created with technologies to cut rock of unbelievable and now lost and forgotten technologies, and thus abilities. It is popularly accepted belief systems attached to the sites are of a modern age. However, even this cannot be confirmed. Furthermore, we know that to create such a site would, in the modern age, take unimaginable effort and technologies, taking many, many years. Ergo, no matter what the mainstream explanation may be, or indeed the mounting areas of research and the enigmas we continue to stumble upon, adding to our list of areas of interest, all remain a growing and as yet unsolved mystery which we find highly compelling. 
The evidence for the existence of a past, now lost, yet once highly advanced and global civilization should now be overwhelming to anyone who has spent any amount of time researching the anomalies and similarities within ancient sites worldwide found on nearly every continent on Earth. There are countless sites claimed as a certain civilization's work Yet these claims not only often lack any explanation as to how these cultures built said ruins, or how, if built by said culture, they can be connected to other sites located in other countries thousands of miles away. These facts are simply academically ignored. Interestingly, another site we can now add to this list of locations that the known polygonal building civilizations pinpointed within the Arab Emirates. According to academic study, quote, the hilly archaeological site not only provides the earliest known evidence of an agricultural village in the United Arab Emirates, but also contains villages, burial grounds, and agricultural infrastructure. The largest collection in the UAE of tombs and buildings from this period is located at Hilly. A number of these Bronze Age structures are located within the Hilly Archaeological Park and are open to the public." End quote. We concur that the site is clearly from a range of different ages, yet along with these modern-looking buildings is one structure which we found incredibly interesting. Known as the Hilly Grand Tomb, like many other structures of unexplainable origin or of lost purpose attributed to that of a tomb. Yet due to the polygonal masonry technique, a now lost technology found the world over, clear for all to see, and of an exquisite advanced quality. This labeling of a mere tomb, to us, has been brought into question. For simply due to the method of its creation, we can state that we do not know who, when, or indeed why such a structure in the Arab Emirates was created. It is undoubtedly a small building, yet one of profound features. Thus, it is a place which we find highly compelling. Machu Picchu, unquestionably one of the most recognizable ancient ruins on Earth. It is a place that is found high on countless astute explorers' bucket lists, and for good reason. Placed far away from modern civilization, requiring a 10-hour trek along the Inca Trail to reach. However, when one arrives at the site, they are rewarded with an astonishing array of ancient feats of engineering. There are many anomalous characteristics of this pre-Incan site, which although ignored by academia, we intend to explore here on our channel. One of these peculiar and as yet unexplained features is the Temple of Three Windows. Located west of the main square, this sacred temple, formed with the use of gigantic megalithic blocks, is adorned with three still-existing trapezoidal-shaped windows, aligned with the path of the sun, allowing its rays to pass through them at differing times of the day, brightly illuminating the sacred plaza beyond. It is one of the many inexplicable features of Machu Picchu, and indeed pre-Incan Peru, which laughs in the face of currently attested academic theory and its attempts to explain how such sites were initially built. Most funded archaeologists claim Machu Picchu was constructed as an estate for an Incan emperor known as Pachacuti between 1438 to 1472. However, we disagree with this claim. Due to the exquisite nature of the site's construction, the clearly advanced levels of architecture specifically, but not exclusively, pertaining to its complex irrigation, sanitation, and drainage systems, and indeed, the precision displayed with the use of such enormous multi-ton stones. These ancient megaliths were not only somehow carried to the tops of these mountaintop fortresses, but as the temple of the three windows clearly displays, masterfully cut to form the windows accomplishing such a refined finish to their surfaces that to claim they were chiseled out using primitive tools, we find not to be a viable or indeed logical conjecture. It is clear to us that whoever created this remarkable temple had at their disposal not only advanced highly capable transport systems, 
but stone-cutting tools far out of the reach of the academically claimed constructors. Furthermore, present upon the stones of the Temple of Three Windows, also visible throughout ancient Peru, are enigmatic marks left by a tool that we, the public, are yet to be informed of. Intriguingly, these marks are not only visible upon the stones within Peru, but are also in abundance at the ancient quarry within Aswan. We have in the past covered the pink granite columns found within the ancient temples of Baalbek, transported from the same quarry to Baalbek, a distance of over 1,000 miles. These columns, we hypothesize, link the temple to the ancient pyramids, and these enigmatic stone-cut marks, present at Machu Picchu, we assert, connect all three. We believe that as more detailed alternative research is undertaken upon these sites, the connections between them, or more specifically, the true creators of said sites, will become apparent as the same. Both religious and evolution theories, in their current forms, stifle this truth by their very nature. Yet, thankfully, as more and more curious individuals relinquish themselves of the rigid and conformist chains of ideologies in favor of a pursuit of the truths of our Earth, the reality of history will inevitably be unraveled. Who built the Temple of Three Windows? How did they construct such an astonishing site built with such aligned precision with such enormous stones? It is undoubtedly highly compelling. Inside a tunnel system carved from the solid limestone bedrock, in the desert of Egypt, lay 24 black granite boxes cut with the precision our modern technologies do not possess. Shaped from as one granite and extremely hard stone. These massive boxes remain a profound mystery for scholars who are unsure as to what their true purpose was, or indeed how old they are. Numerous well-known figures have concluded the hieroglyphics written upon them is of such poor quality it is regarded as graffiti, many people believe Egyptian kings claimed precision made ruins as their own. This is one of the main hypotheses put forward for the Egyptians lack of any records of the pyramids construction, often decorating them in a more primitive form of writing style. The suspected sarcophagi range in weight between 50 and 100 tons. Their real purpose or maybe indeed their function, remains unclear, although they were clearly of importance, they were cut with such precision in fact they would have remained airtight for eons. Researchers like Brian Foster theorize they are clear examples of lost ancient high technology, created before the time of the dynastic Egyptians. Whatever their true purpose was, the truth is that they are beyond magnificent. Well-regarded studies, for example, into the erosion evident on the Sphinxes of Giza, have proven to indicate they may be far older than the Egyptian civilizations. By several hundred thousand years, some even claiming they show evidences of past submersions. The Serapium of Saqqara is located to the northwest of the famous Pyramid of Djosa. This necropolis found near Memphis, Egypt, is believed in modern academia to have been built sometime around 1300 BC by Ramesses II. Just what kind of technology, or indeed what kind of man, could have cut, transported, stacked and placed blocks of stones weighing up to 100 tons on top of each other with such accuracy? Thank you.